In this video, I'm going to show you how you could use a unique little defense out of the nickel 335 wide to help you defend gun bunch. Most importantly, help you defend wheel routes out of the gun bunch. I think one of the best defenses to do this, one of the most slept on defenses for this is indeed the nickel 335 wide because of the adjustments that it allows you to make the cross manning that you can do when you audible down from 335 to 335 wide so we're going to talk about that in this video if you're new to the channel i want to ask you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button i also want to let you know that if you want to get all of my madden 22 offensive and defensive guides i've got 15 offensive and defensive ebooks already available for you uh, we update we've updated a lot of those ebooks as different patches or different things have come up and we're continuing to update them and we're continuing to really release new ebooks and you can get all of that stuff over at my patreon it's just ten dollars a month to join it uh, i'm going to put a link to the description below if you're interested in joining the membership but guys i wanted to take a minute here what we want to do in our 335 wide we're in the 46 playbook um, we're going to put the cover four show two in our audibles and then we're going to put safeties at linebackers so that when we audible down, we've got great coverage. The other beauty of this is this is going to allow us uh, to be able uh, to be able to basically audible down and cross man um, and, and have a lot of flexibility in terms of how we're going to be able to cover things uh, out of this formation. So I'm just going to set a couple of audibles here, and then we're going to come out in the number one play that I want to teach on, and that is Mesh Spot, which I think, I don't know if Skimbo was the first one running this, but I'm pretty sure he's the best one at this, one of his better plays. Uh, mesh Spot, super hard to defend, and it's really actually a simple concept, um, but what you're going to get here is you're going to get a streak to R1, you're going to get a flat to circle, and you're going to get an out route to Mike Evans. And what makes this so good is the user can't be right. Either side, you're going to notice that these wheel routes are going to get wide open, and it's going to be an automatic 10 to 15 yards that we can hit that on that side. We can also hit it on this side. If you take a look here, you're going to notice that the flat or the out pulls the zones out, and you're going to see we're going to be able to hit it. Now, let's say, for example, they play just absolutely impeccable defense and they go user the running back. Well, now the whole middle of the field, the whole middle of the field um, is wide open for a seam streak of the seam. So the reason that this play is so good is because it just breaks zone down. It really does. The way the game's coded this year, the way defense plays, a lot of issues with this. And so it makes it really hard to play defense. I mean, you talk to anybody about that has any... Um, you know, reps in Madden 22, they're going to tell you it is the hardest game defensively probably ever. Um, it's very difficult to play defense in this game. And what I want to teach today is a concept that I like out of the 3 through 5 wide, which is cover four show two. Now, if you take a look at this defensive concept, just out of nut, just kind of as a basic look here, you're going to notice maybe a couple things. The first thing you're going to notice is we have the ability to send uh, or we have the ability to, you know, kind of send three and basically rely on our sheds. We also have the ability to have this guy who uh, we can kind of use as, you know, a, a little bit of a joker type defender. We can put him wherever we want him. And the same way, we also have this guy. So what I like to do, uh, this guy right here, if you think about the way this coverage or defense works in general, he really doesn't do much. Um, if you think about the way the coverage actually works in match, he's supposed to do a lot, but he really doesn't do a whole lot in terms of how the coverage is going to work. So what I like to do is some basic, uh, there's two ways to do this. The first way to do it is to cross man. And what we'll do is we'll cross man the safety on the left on the tight end. And then we'll cross man the linebacker on the right on the running back. And then what that does for us is it basically tells the defenders, hey, um, you're going to have inside leverage on the wheel. So let me just show you. So I'm just going to kind of blind throw the running back. And what you'll notice here is if I throw this with a low pass, I mean, he did complete it still, but there's a guy in the area. I can click on there, try to swat it, try to do something to kind of muddy up that pass uh, and, and take away that passing lane. One of the things you'll hear any good Matt or um, any good NFL quarterback talk about is the passing lanes, get in the, the opening up the passing lanes, right? Um, and what we're trying to do is trying to get in the way of them defensively. So now I want to show you this tight end route. I think the tight end route's a little bit better, but what you'll see here, pretty decent, right? You got coverage there. You just click on and try to make a play on that. That's that's option A. 
is honestly probably the easiest way to start to try to defend this stuff um, because it's just a couple of adjustments. You're literally just manning up this guy on the running back, manning this guy up on the tight end, and then you're going to basically be the three wreck if you want to drop this guy over here on a three wreck you can and then you know you're going to kind of live with the result you're not going to get seam streaked you're you know you really it really comes down to the wheels and you know you're going to get coverage like this okay now i want you to notice something else about this coverage do you notice that the quarter flat defender so if i'm in quarters or not quarters yeah quarters um so let's say that i'm in cover four show two i want you to notice something real quickly Watch this linebacker. So I'm not going to make any adjustments. Watch what he does. You're going to see that he is actually in man coverage, and he does play that averagely. Okay, I wouldn't say he plays it great. He plays it averagely, right? But what we can do with this coverage is we can actually, because these are defensive ends, we can drop these guys into vertical hooks on either side. So on the left side, I can drop him into a vertical hook, and on the right side, I can drop the outside linebacker into a vertical hook. We're still blitzing two people. Um, but now we're doing it from a match concept. And what you're going to notice now, and I got a vertical hook and a quarter flat. It, again, that's how good the wheel route is. But you see that we're in the area. We're, we're basically muddying up these reads and making it much, much more difficult for a consistent completion. Because if they don't throw that perfectly, if they don't time that, that, that route perfectly, it should be an interception. Um, it honestly should be an interception anyway. But let me show it to you one more time here. And again, you can utilize that safety as well. So don't sleep on the safety. He's one of the more important players. Um, something I do like to do a lot out of this is I'll take that safety and I'll actually either crossman him on the tight end or I'll crossman him on the slot, depending on the type of routes that they're running, uh, what concepts. But you get something like this right here. And again, I throw it late and look at there. You see what I'm saying? So if I don't throw that just absolutely perfectly, um, there's a good chance that it's going to get an interception. Most people aren't throwing that route. Uh, if, if they look there and they got that much coverage, they're not going to throw it. Um, if they do throw it, you know, you've got a great chance to, to click on right there. Um, so now on the back side of this, so you see here, we're basically just leveraging the power of two vertical hook zones. Um, it, it, to make it as simple as possible, that's what we're doing. And then if you actually, the, the, the trick with the vertical hooks, guys, is if they come from the defensive line, they play a lot better on the wheels than if they don't, okay? So, like, let's take a look to the right side here. I want you to watch here. You're going to notice that this guy, um, he actually doesn't play it very well. Why? Because he's a safety, okay? Remember, he's a safety. So now if I show you the same concept, and this is going to actually be more beneficial to us in the long run anyway because what we can do is we can go ahead and contain now on that linebacker so they can't, can't roll out on us. But now we've got defensive tackles or defensive ends in vertical hooks, which are obviously you're going to put, um, you, you want to put linebackers there, of course, uh, to make the coverage a little better. But watch now. So now you've got a vertical hook. And look at this. Watch that defensive end play it. And as you can see, uh, he can get out and guard it. He can stay underneath stuff. He's actually going to help a lot. He's going to help with things like dig return. Now, um, if you are really smart, what you'll do with this, though, is kind of help your defense out a little bit. And what I mean by that is, we're just talking about trying to kind of contain one concept because we still have our user. Okay, our, at this point, our user doesn't guard anything. So what we could easily do if we want to is we could take this middle guy, um, this uh, linebacker, and man him up on the slot, which I really like to do against Bunch. It helps with the bombs, helps protect against a lot of that stuff. Then we can drop the vertical hook over there on that side, as you can see right there. And then now we still have three guys, uh, three guys rushing. Um, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and actually uh, now do whatever we want back here, right? So we could take, for example, we could take Johnson and we could bluff blitz him. I want you to look at what zone he's going to be on. He's still going to be on the same zone, but now the game's going to read him as a bluff blitz assignment. And then you could take the safety on the back side of this, man him up on the tight end. That's going to help with any tight end post crossers. Um, you know, or again, there's other things we could do as well. We could put him in a purple. We could man him up on the running back, whatever you want to do there. Uh, but now you're going to notice against this concept, you can come over here and help. You can come over here and help. And then that's going to take away everything else on that other side. So all I'm trying to get at here is don't force yourself to just focus on the wheel routes. Um, because if you do that, to me, it's a little dangerous. Like the easiest way to do this, honestly, uh, we could go ahead and uh, vert hook here, uh, QB contain, 
bluff blitz on the left side of the screen. That's going to allow us to only rush two. And then we can man that guy up on the right on the slot. So you see this is probably the most completed defense. And then your primary responsibility here. See how they'll guard the running back pretty good. And then as you can see, we've got pretty good coverage across the board for one of the better concepts. This is also going to help things like flood, dig return, Z spot and go. Um, this is a great defense for a bunch, and there's a lot that we can build on from the principles that I talked in this video. So I wanted to share this with you guys. 3-3-5 wide is one of the easiest defenses to adjust out of, and that's really the primary reason why so many people like this defense. So I want to thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about this defense, join the Patreon. We've got a ton of content in there for you. I've got 15 offensive and defensive guides. The 4-6 ebook happens to be one of them, and there's a ton more uh, in that membership. So if you want to get access to all of it for just $10 a month, you'll be able to unlock the whole thing. So there's a link in the description. If you're still watching, you want to go check it out, head on down to the description of the video and click the link that I put down there, and you can go check out that Patreon membership.